Hello and welcome back. In this video, today we're going to look at how to redo the center section of a flow style intensifier. All right, you can see here we got a rubber mallet. We're on a flat surface. We have got the center section with the piston inside and the two plungers. We've got the piston pushed to one side and we're going to take the rubber mallet and begin to push out the piston with the two plungers attached. Once out, go ahead and set aside the center cylinder. All right, moving along, we're going to go to the next step. Here we're going to take the two plungers out of the center piston. Utilizing a set of snap ring pliers, go ahead and engage with the snap ring located on the inside of the piston. And you're going to want to compress that snap ring carefully. And once compressed, you're going to be able to move it out of the cavity and pull it out outside, of course, being careful as you're doing this. Once the snap ring is removed, we're going to be able to go ahead and kind of pull on the plunger and out with the plunger is going to come the retaining ring. You can go ahead and take that and set it aside for now. Alright, we're going to go ahead and set the piston on the flat side now so we can work a little easier. Take a few paper towels, clean up any excess oil that may be around in order to have a good grip. Again, utilizing the snap ring pliers, go ahead and engage with the snap ring, compress, being careful and remove and set aside. With this snap ring set aside, we're going to go ahead and again pull on the plunger, uh, shake a little bit as it tends to get stuck, and eventually you'll be able to break that free and then again set the plunger aside with the retaining ring. All right, when you get the chance, go ahead and take some shop towels, paper towels, and clean up any extra hydraulic fluid. All right, in this next step, we're going to go ahead and remove some of the inner uh, T-seal and backup rings that hold the plunger in. And uh, you can see here we're using a pick. And go ahead and try to be careful here as to not to damage any of the metal. And uh, also make sure to uh, not poke your finger with that pick. Go ahead and flip the piston around, and we're going to do the other side. With these rings here, they're not going to be used, so you can go ahead and toss those away. All right, next we're going to go ahead and remove the outside piston seals, as you see here, that engage with the low-pressure cylinder. Again, utilizing your pick, go ahead and get those out and kind of move them around the outside diameter of the piston. Eventually, they will come free. Again, we're going to get a new set of these, so you can go ahead and feel free to th throw these away. All right, at this point, we have successfully uh, disassembled the center section, and we've cleaned everything up and we're going to go ahead and get ready to reassemble the center section. All right, you can see we got all the seals laid out here, but what we really need for this rebuild is going to be the T-seals that you see here and also the piston seals. So we're going to go ahead and pick everything else up that we don't need and set it aside for the time being. All right, in this section, we're going to start with the uh, T-seals for the inside of the piston. It's going to be nice to have a little bottle of hydraulic fluid uh, to pre-lube the T-seal and the backup rings. All right, we're going to go ahead and start with the T-seal. We're going to use hydraulic fluid and run the T-seal through our fingers, ensuring to get hydraulic fluid on all portions of the T-seal. And then we're going to go ahead and install that in the cavity as shown here, using your finger to ensure that that T-seal is properly seated in the cavity within the piston. Next, we're going to put in the backup rings. They are cross-cut, so they do have a top and a bottom side, as you can see here. You want to make sure that you get those flush, and we're going to go ahead and put one on the top side and the bottom side of the T-seal. All right, with the backup ring in, uh, we're going to go ahead and use a pick just to ensure that that backup ring is perfectly flat and supporting the T-seal. We're going to go ahead here and gently spin the piston, again making sure that the backup ring is laying flush up against the T-seal. And again, we're going to use our fingers here to ensure that everything is positioned the way it's supposed to be. We're going to go ahead and install the second backup ring here. We're going to make sure we have a little bit of hydraulic fluid on there. And this backup ring will go on the top side of the T-seal. And as you see here, it's quite a bit easier to install. All right, once successfully installed, let's go ahead and flip over the piston and do the other side. 
All right, for the second side, we're going to do the same as the front side using hydraulic fluid. Go ahead and put in the T seal and then put the backup ring on the bottom side first and then the top side is shown here. All right, we're going to move along here and move to the outside uh, piston seals. And as you can see here, there is a flat side of the seal and then a side that has a O-ring in the center. We're going to have that O-ring face upwards and go ahead and slide that seal into position. Important note here is we like to only do one side of the piston uh, and then go ahead and we're going to move on to the next step which is loading the piston into the low pressure cylinder. Alright, to properly load the piston into the low pressure cylinder we are going to take the side that does not have the seal installed and drop that side into the low pressure cylinder first. As you can see here you can try pushing out with your hands. If that doesn't work you're going to take that rubber mallet and give it a slight tap. Once the piston's loaded into the low pressure cylinder, uh, it moves quite easily and you're going to want to go ahead with your hands and push that piston all the way over to the other side, exposing the portion of the piston that has the groove. Go ahead and grab the other piston seal and we're going to go ahead and install that just like we did with the other one, ensuring that the flat side is facing inward and the o-ring is facing up towards you. Take your rubber mallet, give it a few taps and install the piston into the center of the cylinder. All right, next we're going to move along and install the high pressure plungers. We're going to take a plunger, obviously using the collar side, put a little hydraulic fluid on there, and we're going to go ahead and rock that a little bit and push down with our hands, and it should snap or have a snap feeling once properly installed. All right, let's grab our plunger retaining ring and drop that into place. And next we're going to grab our snap ring, utilizing our snap ring pliers and go ahead and securely lock the plunger to the piston. All right, once the snap ring is in position on the piston, we're going to go ahead and set the pliers aside and push down on the plunger and pushing the piston to the opposite side to make installation of the plunger a little bit easier. All right, let's go ahead and do the other side. With the piston pushed all the way over, you can see we get a much better view of how we did this. Go ahead and rock that plunger in place. As you can see, this one went in fairly easy. Go ahead and take the retaining ring and put that on. We're going to grab the snap ring, get that in place, and use the snap ring pliers to compress the snap ring and get it in the groove inside the piston, which then holds the retaining ring uh, secure to the piston. All right, that is the complete center section for a flow intensifier. We're going to go ahead and pound the piston now towards the center of the low pressure cylinder. And that completes the center section for a flow. We're going to go ahead and set that aside for now and move on to the hydraulic end caps. All right, you can see here we have our two hydraulic end caps. We have the left side and the right side. They've been cleaned up. And to start with, we're going to work on installing the rod seal, otherwise known as the oil seal. All right, to begin, we're going to lay the hydraulic end cap flat with the oil seal facing up at us, and we're going to utilize our smaller snap ring pliers and go ahead and remove that internal snap ring. Once the snap ring becomes free, go ahead and set it aside. All right, utilizing your fingers, just go ahead and remove the brass spacer and set that aside for now as well. Behind the brass ring is going to be the oil seal, and for this you're going to utilize a pick, uh, being careful not to scratch any of the surfaces. But since the oil seal is bad, you can go ahead and uh, pry that up a little bit. Once pried free, go ahead and utilize your fingers and remove the oil seal. This can be uh, tossed as we're going to go ahead and install the new one. Let's go ahead and grab a paper towel and clean up any uh, residual uh, oil or sediment that has been trapped inside the bore of the hydraulic end cap. All right, let's go ahead and start installing the rod seal. You're going to see that the rod seal has a spring side and a flat side. We're going to want to make sure that that spring side is facing up at us. Utilizing a two thumb approach, go ahead and press that oil seal down into the cavity securely and check to make sure that it's installed properly. All right, next let's go ahead and place that brass ring back in the cavity. Then utilizing the snap ring, go ahead and use your snap ring pliers. And we're going to install the snap ring into the cavity to hold everything tight as shown here. 
All right, we can move on to the outside diameter uh, O-rings and backup that hold the low pressure cylinder to the end bell. Go ahead and use a pick and peel free the old seal and backup. All right, we're going to go ahead and use a paper towel again or a shop towel, whatever you have, to clean up any residual oil or debris. All right, we're going to go ahead and install the backup ring, which is the orange piece shown here. The orange piece has two sides, obviously. One side is going to have die marks. You want those die marks to face away from the black o-ring, so in other words, facing the stainless of the hydraulic end bell. Once installed, we're going to go and grab our o-ring, use a little bit of hydraulic fluid, lube up the o-ring, and install the o-ring. Once the o-ring and the backup ring are installed, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that the backup ring and the o-ring uh, have no twist and that everything is aligned uh, perfectly. All right, we're done with one end bell. Let's go ahead and set that one aside and repeat the same steps on the other end bell. All right, we're going to fast forward through this as you've seen the steps uh, prior. What we really want to do is thank you guys for watching the videos and stay tuned as we are going to uh, take all of the steps that we've done, which is the disassembly, the high pressure cylinders, the check valves, and now the low pressure section. Take all of those and go ahead and reinstall all of those parts together to build, uh, to rebuild back up our flow intensifier. Stay tuned.